Welcome back to Watati Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Hummel, the tier 6 German SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Ghost Town Encounter and it's under the command of Talon 1958. And this is his first response to Angelina's game, which we published earlier today. Let's see how he gets on. Okay. Well, it's built from the hull of a Panzer Mark IV with Panzer Mark III running gear. So it was a fairly late development during the war, because although the, the Mark IV actually came out uh, before the war started, they only had a few of them, um, this RT actually was a late entry into the war. And uh, they started using them for counter battery purposes to actually attack and take out the enemy RT when they located where they were. Now he's using the short howitzer, the stock howitzer, which is the same howitzer you'll find on the Gorilla, and it's very accurate, and it's got a very high trajectory, but it does have a decreased range. But on top of that, it does actually have a very fast reload, uh, or fast-ish, and it's got more shells, which means you can fire more at the enemy, collect more hit points. Okay, he's had a thought about getting that OI, but he's gone for the Churchill. And he lands the shell in front and gets some a small amount of damage and some stun assist. Now, yes, the standard reload with the uh, stock gun is uh, 25.31 seconds. And uh, 480 alpha with the standard HE rounds and 38 millimeters of pen. 6.7 meters uh, was the burst radius. Now, 25.31 seconds is a standard reload. But you can see here that Talon's got it down to 20.5. Okay. Lots of targets he can shoot at at this end of the map. And the OI is looking a very juicy target indeed, because if you can hit those things in the side, and he got 39 hit points from that shot, if you hit them in the side, usually the shell will actually uh, do quite a bit of damage. If you hit them on the hard points, of course, he'll do very little indeed. Next shot. Of course, if you do use the, the top gun, the uh, the best one, then that, that can fire over the entire range of the map. But it's got a much lower trajectory, which means it's more difficult to get shells onto the enemy target. So from this position, he can hit the uh, tanks that are actually hiding just around the corner from that centerpiece, or that center area. And he's tracking the OI at the moment, getting set up, rounds out. Beautiful shot. 144 from that one. You can see it actually hit one of the little small turrets right on the front. And he's gone down and he got the tr uh, damage assist there because he actually tracked the OI, made it easier for our teammates to take them out. Now, it looks like uh, both teams have got people in the cap area at the moment. And that OI's just got, yes, he's just lost 204 hit points from the double direct hit. Now it's two-part ammunition that they use. The idea is that uh, they have um, the shells on pallets, which are carried around by supply trucks. And they put the shell in first, and then they have a little tin, which they put in afterwards. And that tin contains bags of powder. And the amount of, or the number of bags of little powder that you actually put into that tin, which is the, basically the end of the shell, so to speak, um, that's the how far you want the shell to go. Rounds out the stug. It's the building instead. So ideally you want to, because uh, of course you can vary the amount of the strength of the shell to actually get different ranges and shoot really accuracy. Accurately, I should say <laughs> accuracy. It's a very accurate RT if you have the right amount of powder to hit the right target. Rounds out. Oh, that was a good one. 235. Two critical hits, probably tracked him. Okay, he's just waiting for that uh, C1 Heavy to come out from behind there. Now, it's a tier 6 game with tier 5 tanks, I think, and then tier 4 tanks in it. So he is top tier in this game. 
and yep the T1 Heavy's decided to come out but only briefly oh no he's got more courage up now but yes that was a, a damaging hit as well 184 he's over a thousand hit points of damage now and but he's still a little low on the stun assist now one of the reasons why he's moving away here is that he spotted a T34 which is getting rather close to us right now and so he needs to move away and allow his teammates to deal with that T34 otherwise he's going to be out of the game fairly quickly okay, he's turning to face the T34 it's good that he's alert and aware of the threats always try and keep your eye on whatever threats are coming your way this is going to be good rounds out oh yes that hurt 193 right into the side it's tracked him we're just he's waiting to fix it but we probably won't be ready to shoot by the time he's fixed it and he's now moving but he doesn't want to meet that stug and the stug just hit him this could be a kill shot if the guy gets still for any length oh okay now can you get it right there you go yes that's how to do it He'd lined that shot up. He knew that the uh, the T-34 was vulnerable because, of course, he turned and he was moving away or was going to be moving away and he just drove right into the shell. Okay, we're one up on the enemy. There's only four of them left. They still have an RT just like us. In fact, their RT is the FB-304, the BERT. And, of course, that's the British SVG. Okay, now... We're sitting almost in line with the cap area, but we've got to watch out for this T1 Heavy. Now, can we get a shot on him? He's coming just around the corner. Is he going to come through that gap? If he does come through that gap, we might not spot him, but the T67 might. And there's a Stug as well. The Stug will probably spot him first, I think, more than anything. So we're dialed in on this at corner. And if he comes around the corner then Talon will nail him. He hasn't come out. As far as we can tell, he's fairly low on hit points. I think it's probably the reason why he doesn't want to come around the corner. We can't move up towards the cap, even though somebody is actually saying move up. We can't move up until we know where that T1 Heavy is. The Wolverine is headed uh, around the back. And I get the feeling that he's probably going to try and attempt to attack the Hetzer and the KV-1 round the back there. The only one we don't know the whereabouts of is the enemy RT, the Burt. So he could be anywhere. Well, T1's not coming out from that corner. Someone's highlighted the ship on the south, on the east side, but on the south end of the east side. And it might be that the Burt is there. We don't know. T-67's covering that corner. He's got a very useful 76mm gun. Oh, T-1 Heavy's in sight! Okay, so he's picked a nice spot to fire from. Can we get a shell into him? Well, not at the moment, because the, the buildings are actually in the way. I suspect that he can get a kill shot. Oh, there's the KV-1. Can get a shot. Well, unfortunately, the enemy Hetzer just killed our Stug guy. The Wolverine's gone up onto the height, so he can shoot down on the enemy from just above the uh, cap area. He's watching. Our KV-1S8's moving in on the T1 Heavy, and I think the Talon's probably going to get a quick snapshot or a shotgun on the T1 Heavy if he spots him face to face. T67 is holding on this corner for the moment. We're holding as well. He is a one shot, the T1, so yes, we can take him out. KV1SA is plenty of health. He can go around that corner and, and take the kill, but the T67 wants it for himself. And he started engaging, and he's got the T1. Okay, that means the KV1 is the one that's coming towards us. He's just around the corner now if we pull over here we might be able to lob the shells on top of the kv1 from over the building but we need to get more range to do that he's gone down into the dip this should work okay from this position he has got a line of shot 
Okay, there he is. Yes, he can hit him. And he goes down to the T-67. So that guy gets another kill. He's up to three kills now. Talon's only got the one so far. And the Hetz is in sight, but we don't know where the Burt is. Now the Hetzer, I think he probably has the derp gun. Can't be certain on that, but I think he does. And Talon's not afraid of him anymore. Oh, he's gone. He's gone down. And he was taken out by the Wolverine from uh, behind. Okay, so it's only the Burt that's left. And the best thing to do is everyone get into the cap, force the Burt to come in and get a reset, and then you can take him out. Trouble is, the Burt's such a fast little arty. If you don't get into the cap, there's a fairly good chance that the uh, Burt could just start lobbing shells into the cap willy-nilly. And it's much better to everyone get in, force the matter, force the Burt to actually come in. And if he doesn't come in, then you cap out and end the game that way. Okay. Our teammates are just the other side of the cap area. They decided to go there. It's a good chance that the Burt might actually come in from just behind that O iron. Where Talon's actually parked himself is good because it actually does defend him. Uh, using the OI. So I think he actually spotted that that particular spot to go to and he worked that one out. That's the, the right place to be. 15 seconds to go. If they're coming from that direction, more than likely they'll get spotted by the other tanks and they'll be taken out immediately. And three seconds to... Oh, he fired from the other side of the map and he failed. And the Burt was over on the east side of the map, so they've won. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was a second class tanker for Talon 1958 of Olymp in the Hummel. He also managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got seven. And his win eight from the game was 2,288, which is very good indeed. Let's have a look at the team score. Okay, well, it's come up and it shows that the high scorer in that game was the OA on our team. Got a high caliber for 3,034 hit points of damage. Second highest turned out to be the OA on the enemy team. He got 2,303. Now, was that the one that he actually took out in the game? No, he actually took out the T-34, didn't he? Yes, he got damage on the, the top scorer on the enemy team, but he didn't take him out. And in third place, we can see it's Talon. Yes, he's got the third place score. 1,414 experience, uh, hit points out of that one. When it came to kills, it was the OI who did the best with four kills. Three kills went to the T-67 and the Wolverine. And two kills went to the OI on our team. And on the enemy team, their OI, their T-1 Heavy, their Polak Tank, and their M8 A1. Talon only got the one kill in the game, that T-34. Well, when it came to base XP, he's a little closer to the top. In fact, he's in fourth place. The OI got the, top, the highest with 1,204, not only getting the high caliber, but the highest base XP. And the only player to get over 1,000 base. 752 went to the KV-222, and 674 went to the T-67, with Talon just behind him with 671. So only three experience points out of those two in the end. When we... Um, so out of that, we can say, well, if I bring that back, that's okay. So he did get the third highest on damage, um, fourth highest or joint fourth uh, when it comes to the, um, is it fourth? Yes, it's joint fourth on kills and fourth on XP. He fired 12 rounds in the game, got nine direct hits on the enemy, but none of them penetrated. I would have thought at least the T-34 would have been a penetration, but no, apparently it wasn't. Must have hit the front and didn't go through. 11 splashes as well, 1,414 hit points of damage, of which 1,158 were at more than 300 meters. Six enemy vehicles were damaged, one was killed, 160 hit points of damage assistance, and 247 hit points of stun assist of 10 stuns. If only he'd done a bit more stun assist, I think he might have got a first class or, well, probably not a, an ace tanker. It wasn't really enough to get an ace tanker. He did get 33 capture points in the game. And on a premium count, he earned 80,630 credits after completing a mission and getting 50,000 credits for that. 
and he got 25 bonds for another mission achievement. And he also picked up 2013 experience points out of that one. It was his best game of the day so far, but is it enough to beat Angelina in the competition? And the answer to that is no, I'm afraid it's not. Even though Angelina got a second class and a bruiser, she got a much higher win eight, 2,679 whereas Talon got 2,288. So Angelina is still in the lead with her game on Mines, the one where she went into the cap and capped out to win, even though, of course, there were still two enemy tanks out there and she didn't know where they were. Well, one of them appeared out of nowhere. The M10 RBFM came up behind the cap but just left it too late and the uh, and the enemy um, Dickamax actually went the wrong direction, came over the top of the hill I went after Arati instead of actually trying to get a reset on the cap. And he could have got a reset, but I guess he just couldn't see us. So that's why he failed. Anyway, so Angelina's still in the lead and Talon's going to have to provide a better replay to get the weekend lion. Yes, otherwise he's going to be using lots of coffee on Sunday morning. <laughs> yes, because it's a, it takes a lot chasing after Remy because uh, he's a very active little boy and he loves watching these videos. Uh, lovely. So uh, um, I'm really pleased that he always does. In fact, he's he always seems to be on the mobile phone watching the, the games on the mobile phone. So, uh, yes, we do appreciate Remy watching our videos and uh, seeing how everyone's get, getting on. And he especially likes watching the replays by his mother and his father, because, of course, uh, it's fun to watch seeing your mummy do so well and uh, beating daddy all the time. Well, not all the time, but some of the time. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.